Hello everyone, today I'm bringing you a replay of AE vs Stormless. The idea here is that they are both medium level players. And the focus is to see the mistakes that more especially AE here is going to do. And I think that these kinds of replays can be really helpful to see. Because many people watching this video are going to be around this level of play, uh, maybe even below. But with that said, I think that many of the mistakes will be the same. So hopefully if you catch some of the mistakes that here in this case AE is doing, uh, you can then fix them in your own game gameplay. Okay, so... Uh, there's also a special focus on Soviets for this replay because obviously AE is playing Soviets, so there are things that I that I need to talk about because of the faction he's playing. So if you if he was playing another faction, maybe you'd do some other types of mistakes. Uh, and because of that, this is more helpful, obviously, to any Soviets player out there. But either way, there there are probably going to be some general mistakes that are not special to the faction itself. Okay. So, I'm going to leave Fog of War on here. And right now we have a fairly common conscript start. Fresh conscripts have arrived. Capping order, nothing too out of the ordinary right here. Oof, okay. So, I think that we are going to see a lot of these kinds of mistakes coming into the future here. Which is, I think that at this level of play, where usually the players lack the most, is on the engagement level kind of play. Uh, so, not sure if he was the distracted here, but if the Pioneer is coming in, there is no way that the combat engineer, at, at least at this distance, is going to win the engagement. The pioneer is going to close the distance and it's going to win the engagement. In the case of uh, the combat engineer versus the pioneer from Austria, as Soviets, you want to back away and keep firing at long range. If he keeps chasing you, he is losing time as well that he needs to cap the points. And I would argue that early on, fuel is more important for Austria than it is for Soviets, because Soviets are more content in staying in the first stages of the game while Austria, one of their powers is getting that tier 2 up with the light vehicle play so Austria suffers more from the lack of fuel early on than Soviets do if he chases you, you are okay with that either way, the Pioneer closes the, closes the distance here and it's going to be a lost engagement for the combat engineer and these are the type of uh, mistakes that really differentiate you know the medium level players from the high level play as well where one high level player would have retreated uh, soft retreated this engineer to over over this road maybe and you would have uh, shooting the pioneer uh, or you would have you know went to cap this point right here and either way it wouldn't have been a big loss like it is now if you think about it he just got the engineer back to base and the austere player got the fuel for free and this this is just a tiny glimpse you know it's a it seems like a tiny mistake but these kinds of mistakes add up especially in the early game where having the fuel point for you know 20 or 30 less seconds means getting some kind of uh, light vehicle out sometimes even up to a minute late anyways now, the first two conscripts of the Soviet player right here went around the center. And because of that, uh, also because of that early retreat that he just suffered, there's going to be a lack of resources coming in. So these conscript squads, either they should already have been near the Pioneer when the engagement happened, or they should be capping right now, because 
uh, AE is going to lack fuel for later on. Also, this isn't really a good engagement to take. Again, as Soviet especially, you're probably going to be the most aggressive player early on because of the nature of the matchup. You're going to have four fighting squads um, and they are going to be cheaper than the austere counterpart. So you need to be really smart on how you do these engagements, really. And Singh has one of the conscript squads split off to cap the fuel, which is okay. Then you can't really, uh, you know, realistically ex expect this one conscript to be able to get cut off. Because the Austria player already has an MG and a Grenadier out. This con conscript alone is not going to do much. And because of that, the Soviet player here just lost valuable time where he could be capping some points. And he back backs off, at least he, he recognizes that it's a lost effort right there. But with that said, he goes to cap the victory points. So victory points, obviously they are the win condition of the game. But, in my opinion, they are really bad to cap early on. They are not going to give you anything useful for the next few minutes. As if you're playing... As if your opponent is playing Austria here, and he ignores the VPs, and he goes for the resource points. Even if you maybe, you know, take 25 VPs off, off of him, even 50 VPs off of him. As soon as uh, the advantage he gathered from the resources hits, it's going to hit harder, and it's going to bleed you more than the 50 VPs you bled him. So, again... I would, I would advise to ignore the VPs early on and focus on making your opponent retreat units from the field and capping other resource points. Okay, but it's still in an okay state the game. Now we have a focus on capping the, the resources and he's going for the manpower point and for the munitions point and we have a conscript and an engineer going around to the field. And he spots the MG right here. Now, this is a risky move right here. I'm not sure how this will fare out, but this is risky. Okay, so it didn't fare out. Uh, the reason this is risky is that the Soviet player has two conscripts on the right side of the map. And he knows that the austere player is playing for the center of the map. So this conscript squad for sure is going to meet two to three units and it's going to retreat back to base and that's not, not what you want. You want to avoid having the units in the base all the time. Um, so right here this was a mistake rushing the MG even if it was out of position because really it was supported by two grenadier squads and you weren't ready to support that conscript squad with more conscripts because you're capping the map. When you're capping the map uh, you're going to have less units fighting, obviously. So that's the point where if you're trying to harass some unit or do some scouting like he did here, you want to play more defensively. So, for example, here I would get this engineer to cap this point, for example, to give me more resources. And I would go around with the conscript squad here and place it so, uh, the squad in green cover. And if he turns the MG, I run over to this VP or maybe this Edro. And I basically make him waste time turning the MG and maybe bringing the Grenadiers to deal with the Conscript, at which point I just, you know, do some backtrack to over here maybe. And while all that is happening is Grenadiers are chasing my squads and I'm just capping the right. While here, he is just going to have a Conscript back in base for free. Because of that, also this Engineer at most he's going to decap this, it's maybe he, he even won't do that. It depends on how fast uh, Stormblast reacts here to, to get this point back. But the big problem here is that these kind of retreats usually make you susceptible to get off maneuvers, which in the end are going to hurt you much more. So you really need to be careful with this and pick your engagements. If, you th if you're thinking on capping with most of your units, then... Um, 
Just try to play less aggressive with the other ones and bait around your opponent. Make him lose time. And like expected, there's a cutoff maneuver right here. The conscripts here are really out of position, they should be around here. He does that, get the, the decap because uh, the austere player goes for the cutoff. Also, there's another mistake that I'm seeing right here. The Soviet player is now floating 500 manpower. Floating is another big problem that usually players face, either because they don't know what to build or because they get distracted. Floating is okay only in one scenario in my opinion. Floating is only okay when you already have most of the units that you need and you uh, well that, that means that your unit composition is doing well against his and you're not sure what he's going to do next. Maybe you, you are split between is he going uh, X choice or is he going Y choice? And in that case, that you aren't sure, you aren't going to, you know, to use resources for a counter that it's going to be useless. And in that scenario, it's okay to float. Not right here, not, in, not ever in the early game is, is it okay to float. And I would argue most of the mid game as well. This 500 manpower should be in, on a new conscript squad. Or either tacking, but mostly a fourth conscript, conscript, conscript squad. Uh, as Soviets, if you have three conscript squads and trying to fight three grand squads plus an MG plus a pioneer, you're going to lose for sure. With four conscript squads, it's really the, the, the big difference. And this is really hurting the Soviet player right here. So don't float, try to keep track of the resources. If you're playing Soviets and you're going for a conscript build, always do four conscripts. Okay, so... Now we have the conscripts moving in to save the cutoff, and we have a cutoff maneuver right here. We also have an extra engineer being built, which again, it, it's okay, but I would first build a fourth conscript squad because you really need fighting units, otherwise, this happens. This is a good cutoff maneuver though. And here we have the cutoff being restored. We have a bit of a conscript being lost around the map here. Okay, so what to do in this situation? Okay. Uh, he had this conscript squad capping. I would have kept it and then retreated it. But anyways, that's off the point. Um, in this map, and in many maps, there are going to be cover, uh, green cover around some important parts of the map. So obviously I can't go over all, all the maps, but especially on this one, uh, you have this wall right here that's really useful to check what units are coming out from base and to deal potential damage, even if there's an MG here. And in 1v1, there's always this little game where even if you take some damage on some, some units, you get info out of it. And it's also a game of annoying your opponent. And conscripts are really good at that. Um, usually conscripts in green cover last for a long time. So right here, uh, these engineers, I would say, they don't have the flamers. So all I would do is be annoying and cap this point and maybe this point around the back. And this conscript squad I, I would have used to be annoying around the green cover right here. But anyways, we have a lone grenadier squad. This is a mistake from the Austrian player. But there's also a mistake from the Soviet player here in not, not keeping the conscripts oh damn, in range. So here, two models just dropped. And this squad is going to be much more useless now. And here we have, so I think that this is highlighting a big mistake that the players do with aggressive factions in general or aggressive early game. So Soviets and USF are usually the main culprits of this on average level play, where you are seeing that uh, the Soviet player is kind of throwing the units to, to his enemy and hopefully decaps the points, right? But there isn't really a coordinated effort 
make anything out of this. Really, these units are just here to decap the point and they are going back to base. And the Austrian player is okay with that. He's just going to use the MG to suppress them and then recap the point once they retreat back to base. Whenever you don't have a plan of attack, your units should be doing something more useful, such as capping these back points or be annoying, make the opponent chase you. If you're capping these edge points, you are basically trying to call your opponent to come to you. And that means that these units are now going to be on the edge of the map. And because of that, you can make efforts in the center of the map. It's always a bit of a cat and mouse game sometimes. And really, these types of mistakes of not having a game plan or a, an action that, that you're going to take really start to cost you. Again, if you don't have a plan, just be annoying, cap back points somewhere. And when you have a plan, then you can start bringing these units forward. Because it's really bad that you have half your units on the field and half of your units on your base because you're trying to do plays like these. It means that you're always susceptible to cut-off maneuvers. It also means that you have to play passive because you don't have, you know, every unit in the field ready to help out in a future big engagement. Okay, so engineers go forward, they get suppressed, both of them. Conscripts are trying to be annoying here. So this is, again, one tiny mistake. This conscript squad, if he went here and harassed the MG, there was really nothing the austere player here could do to stop the harassment, but the Soviet player is allowing the MG to maybe reposition. Again, you shouldn't care that the Grenadier is in this building, especially because it only has one window. This is a case of being too passive. But okay, we have a cutoff maneuver again. This is really what you should be doing with Soviets as well, harass that cutoff, be annoying, be aggressive. And if you have this position, you're really okay with it. All you need to do now is place maybe one or two conscripts behind this wall. And he'll bleed a lot of manpower trying to capture that back. I'll just fast forward this a bit. Tier 2 going up, that's usually the best choice as well. And again, I'll have you guys notice that the Soviet player is still floating around 400 manpower. Not really great. And still missing that fourth conscript squad. Hmm. Again, a really small mistake here, but these conscript squads are in meeting cover when they could be in this green wall, still with most models, and harassing the pioneer that is now capping this point. Again, it's the small things, it's in the small details. This conscript now is going back to base because of the usage of medium cover, it's going to be one less unit in the field. If he had kept the conscript squad in this green cover, you could potentially hold this cutoff much longer. Small things really matter in Company of Heroes. We have a, fl a flank attempt here. Hmm, okay. So, another, another thing. This conscript squad, it only has one window. It's okay to use the building to scout. But as soon as you have the position of every unit that the enemy has, such as these units right here, this is really important info, and it was really important to use the building. But as soon as you have the information, the conscript is basically being useless here. And it's, it, it would have been okay to kept it there, if there wasn't the engagement happening here. Just imagine how easy this engagement would be if this conscript had already left this building and would be in a flank maneuver right here, even if it took some shots from this grenadier in the way. It would have basically me meant that maybe you could even get this building, and two units from the Osir player would be back to base. So you need to watch out always to see potential engagement wins if you can outnumber your opponent. If your opponent has all his units scattered around the map, as it is right here, and I think this is a mistake that many Austrian players do, and as an aggressive faction such as USF and Soviets you can take advantage of, you see the unit split, you can basically do pincer maneuvers where 
you have basically you know 70 percent of your army try to fight 20 percent of his and if he had done that right here this would have been an easy win so try to always look out for the flag maneuvers and try to outnumber your opponents and he's, he's even going to lose his engagement because of that this mg in no way should have been safe with the conscript squad being around the center so always be watchful for those flank opportunities okay so we have a cutoff maneuver from some panzer grenadiers grenadiers back to base we also have shock troopers out so this is really a big big infantry focus right here we also have the points being capped and another decap so the fuel is being nicely deni denied now for the austere player and finally we have a flank in coming, uh, coming through the south okay so it's really important that also you work obviously with the information you have otherwise it's useless to have the information right you see a grenadier capping the point and you see a panzer grenadier and some other unit i think it was the officer right here you know for sure he's going to try to flank you here i still wouldn't have retreated just because he hasn't made the move yet but right here you see this the the units coming in the mg should already be get, getting out of the house to reposition you want to keep your units the maximum time on the field that you can so if, let's imagine you win an engagement and you have three models left low HP you still want to decap something or maybe cap something with the unit before it goes back to base you want to maximize time in the field you don't want to have engagements that make your units go back to base constantly like it has been happening in, in this game and this is going to be another case of that because the MG was late to move it's probably going to be one more unit back to base right? And that means that's going to be one less unit supporting these units and maybe now because of that the opponent is going to out outnumber you and then going to win the engagement yet again and make all these units go back to base potentially in the future. It's really in these little mistakes that the games change. And let's see what happens here. So these units flank the MG. The MG actually is very lucky here not to drop more models or maybe even be picked up and now we have a really big out number here these units are going to make these uh, conscript retreats very easily and everything goes back to base so see what i just said because of that one mg not moving in time we now have the future outcome of three units going back to base and not having these points it's uh, really I highlighted here how the little mistakes cascade into something much bigger. And in the long term, if these kinds of engagements keep happening, it's how you lose the early or mid game or even the game potentially. Especially, especially at the mid level, you know, kind of uh, play level. Uh, these mistakes are really the bane of these kinds of, you know, this kind of uh, play at this level. And it's really something to look out for. It's not really a tacking choice. It's not really the decision of what you do what the, with the resources. It's mostly the micro engagements. Even though here we have some mistakes of floating manpower and fuel, uh, these mistakes I would say is what is going to bring you to the next level of play if you master uh, keeping the units on the field. Okay, notice here how three units went back to base and now we have a new conscript squad unsupported. Again, the old game, if you guys noticed, we have had half of the army fighting and half of, of the army in base. And I wanted to see that this unit is now going back to base again. And it's going to bleed manpower because it's going to drop models. And he didn't win anything with that. Nothing was won because of that.
We have three tier three coming up as well. And now the units are now coming back from base. Okay, and this unit should have chased this unit right here. Micro mistake again. Now the units are coming back into the field. Okay, I would also like to highlight a small mistake here. So, you saw that before this building is going up, that he was floating maybe 400 manpower, I wasn't quite sure. And if you look at this fuel situation, it's at 11 fuel. That means that before he can get a vehicle, it's going to be a long time, even if he has the building up. And because of that, usually in these situations, it's okay to either build a new unit and wait out for the right amount of fuel, or, uh, you know, keep the manpower up just if you need to do bulk reinforcement. It's really important that, and I keep repeating that, <laughs> I keep repeating the re it's really important, but it really is, um, that you use the manpower at your disposal in that time frame of the game to get you the most advantage. So he's, he's only going to get one tank out from maybe, you know, depends on how the fuel situation goes, but in a really long time. And... Maybe with one extra unit in the field in that time, you would secure many more resources. And then if you build tier 4, you would have the fuel to just pump out vehicles. Okay, so that's another micro mistake right here. Again, it might not cost him, it might, it might cost him, you never know, but usually it's a better idea or, you know, it's... It gives you better chances of something being su successful if you do that. There aren't guaranteed wins in Company of Heroes, there are just things that might give you more chances to win. Okay, so we have the left side of the map free. And the one engagement right here. Okay, now we have a Ziz gun, which is a wise choice considering there hasn't been a vehicle out. So, if you're playing as Soviets here, you have to be th thinking, what is my opponent doing with his fuel? He hasn't done a single vehicle. And we are 12 minutes into the game. That means all his fuel is going into a P4 rush potentially, because he basically skipped the tier 2 light vehicles. Uh, so it's really smart here that the Ziz gun is being built. The thing is that you also should consider that add the Osir player here, not build the Pigren or the Officer. You maybe would have to be expecting that P4 to come in sooner because because he didn't use the fuel up until now. You can assume that the only reason there isn't a P4 out is because there was a manpower bottle uh, bottle cap. Um, so if you don't see these kinds of units and your opponent hasn't built any vehicle, then be ready to have the AT gun out sooner. Okay, we have some mines being built. Mines win win games. AE knows that. Some scouting over here. Very good. Some scouting here again to see the position. We have two units here. Okay, you see one MG here, you see two Grenadiers here. What would you do? Like I said before, in this situation, you instantly want to move the bulk of your units, maybe leave the engineer here for scouting in the building, to go to this side, outnumber your opponent, make him go back to base and keep this part of the map. Okay, we'll see how the Soviet player reacts here. We have Shock Troopers coming into the side. And keeping at long range, now medium range. 
Okay, so see, this is what they should have done earlier. If you guys remember on that engagement where there was an MG and a Grenadier here. You see how easy it is? The units just go back to base and now these units are free to help out in the center of the map. It's that easy. Another cutoff maneuver going on over here. Although this isn't really a cutoff at this point. Okay. Another micro engagement here, which is a, a mistake, a small mistake. You have to recognize when you're not going to win the engagement, and it's a Panzer Grenadier, even though it's two models and an officer, both close range against a conscript squad. The best thing to do here would be to back off this squad around here and support it with some other units or, you know, just maybe run a bit when they are trying to close in the distance. If you do that, it's most likely that you are going to win the engagement against these two units and this unit, uh, you know, get uh, doesn't need to retreat back to base and that's one last unit in base yet again, which uh, this one is going to back to base for sure, and it is. We have moves in the center as well. This is an okay play right here. This engineer though should have went right here to help the fuel out. Another... Let's see what he does here. Before I speak about it. Okay. Okay. So... Oster units just retreated back from the right. And the first thing the Soviet player does when that happens is go for the VP. Again, VPs are the win condition, but really right now in the mid game, it's more of a war of the fuel, because it's where, when the tanks are going to start hitting. And this unit, by decapping the VP, isn't going to win much. Right now you want to harass the fuel straight away. So if you win these engagements on the later stages of the game, you want to get you know, you want to use that time to decap the fuel every time you can. Like the Oster player did here. Notice that even though this Oster, the Grenadier is going back to base right here, he decapped the fuel and capped the fuel and that's going to hurt AE here in the long term on the fuel department. Another thing to point out is, again, the manpower float and the fuel. So I would assume here that the Soviet player here isn't sure what he, what he wants to build. But, for me, there's a, a clear concept that I should talk about here that I did already before mentioning this video. You want to use the resources that's going to help you the most at that time frame in, in the game. Don't save resources thinking, oh, this might be useful later, unless it's a situation I talked about before where you're thinking that the player might do something and you aren't sure, and you don't have don't want to have a useless counter out. In this situation, you haven't seen any unit out. You haven't seen a pack out, so you know he doesn't have any AT counter. He has zero AT counter besides the P4 that might potentially come out, and you already have a Ziz gun to deal with that. What he should have done is 20 fuel ago, and 20 fuel ago seems like a small number. But he could, have, uh, he could have had a T-34 so sooner into this game. And the T-34 denies any attempt that the Oster player does in maybe capping a full side of the map. A full side of the map means that in some minutes the Oster player is going to be really behind in resources compared to you. That's how impactful it is and why it's really important that you use the resources you have in the time frame you have to gain that advantage so it pays off in a minute or two. And if he had done that at D34, maybe you would even have to make the Oster player build a pack sooner. You know, react with the pack. And the pack is 300 manpower that he needs to do to have a unit that's only useful against a T34 and needs to follow the T34 around the map. Okay? And that's going to give the chance to all these infantry units that the Soviet player has 
to better play against the Austrian infantry because it just used 300 useless manpower for a unit that isn't going to help him in any way fighting the, the bulk of the Soviet army. So that's really big. And even if a P4 comes out, it's not like the T34 is useless against it. But it is supported by an Aziz gun either way. So right here it's a big mistake. And I think this mistake, it seems small, right? But if you see top level play, this is the kind of things that you expect top players to do. And you think, okay, that seems like a small thing. It's really not a small thing. Use the resources you have. Use the vehicle timings the best you can. Because having a vehicle out and rain the map for 30 seconds to 1 minute is really, really big. Especially if you see that your opponent has no counter out. This is really a big loss opportunity right here. We have a second Seize gun being built, which again, it's okay because he's expecting a P4, which I, it's, it's right in production right now. Again, no vehicle out from TR4. I'm only assuming he's saving either for an IS-2 or a KV-8. Okay, P4 goes to the left. The right side of the map is in control of the Soviet player. And we have a KV-8 being built. Yeah, that's a KV-8. Okay. Uh, one thing that I'm going to point out that the Soviet player is doing right here and that this is usually, I think, the the difference between medium level players and lower level play players is that they have a concept of the balance between anti-tank and anti-infantry. You can see that AE here was comfortable doing a tank that's full anti-infantry because he knows he has the support of two Ziz guns. So he knows he's covered in the AT department. He has that balance. And that's really good for low level players to, to learn here. He is, however, leaving the Ziz guns unsupported through the center. And if the Austrian player was ready to rush in with the P4 right here, this would have been game, okay? This would have been game. It's really important that the Tigans are further back and if they have the full support of the army. Okay, that is an unnecessary loss as well. If you ate out though. Okay, coming back into the field. Okay, this is really important. Also, I want to point out that this is something that the Soviet player is doing right here for any lower level players that are watching this. Um, when you have um, a combined arms approach with two Ziz guns and some anti-tank, anti-infantry tank, it's important that you keep your units in the same part of the map, okay? If you rush the KV-8, you need to have, the so with some kind of tank, you need to have the support of the Ziz guns. The one doesn't work without the other. They always need to be working together. While if you have a unit composition that is, is less of a combined arms approach, that means if you have, for example, two P4s instead of two Tegans and an anti-infantry tank, or you have a P4 and a Panther, that means that you can have different playstyles. You don't need to have all your, your units together, you can keep harassing the edges of the map, 
and you can be effective doing that. And that's really the difference between usually the Soviet gameplay and factions like OKW, okay? It's that the Soviets and, the, and Austria, for example, really work well when they get to this stage of the game where they have many units supporting each other, but it's at this stage of the game where it's important that you know that keeping your units together is really important so they support each other. While some other factions, such as OKW and USF, work, uh, work okay, if not better, by having the, you know, the generalist kind of units working around the map. So we have the map being capped back right here for the Soviet player. Again, AT against some kind of unsupported, but they are going to be alright. I just want to know where... Okay, there's only one engineer, right? Okay. Even though I said that you should keep your units together, if you have this amount of units, uh, even though, okay, he lost a, lot, a bunch of units as well, he lost the conscript. Had he not lost that conscript, I would even argue that he should rebuild it here. The point is that this, the amount of units that you have right here should be the ones that go to the center of the map or are allocated to the center of the map. And the reason I'm saying that I would, would have rebuilt an extra conscript squad here is because, okay, you really need all these units to support the Zeus guns so they don't get harassed, right? But you all, it's also important that you never have your opponent uh, have an harassed points in the map if there isn't any action over there. That means if your opponent isn't allocating units to defending the right part of the map and it's basically free capping, it's worth to even build the extra unit to harass those points. Now, I wouldn't advise you to do that, if you only have this amount of units, I would build one extra more. Because if your opponent does an all-in against your Zeus guns, it's game. You really need to have the most units supporting your AT guns. So here, I would have built an extra conscript squad, and his sole job would be to harass the right when there are no units there. And if I take Fog of War off, I'm going to guess... Okay, there's one Grenadier squad here that can be easily retreated back to base. But other than that, this is all... And contested, right? Free points, free harassment. Your opponent needs to get some units over there if he wants to cap that back, and that's lost time. And all these units are around the center and, and left part of the map right now. Really important. Okay, so P4 goes down here. Big mistake from the Austria player. AV8 comes in to clean up. This is going to maybe be a wipe here. And that's, oh, that's a really big mistake, okay. Another micro mistake, okay, guys. This KV-8 tried to go for the wipe here. But it's more important, if you can, to get the wipe on a pack and always. It's going to allow you to have a vehicle play. And it's going to give you one extra AT gun. And if you think about it, okay. The only way for Austria to win this game is to have vehicles out so you can do something meaningful, okay? The only way Austria can win this is by having a, a good vehicle play up in the next few minutes and maybe getting one Zizgan stolen or killed or maybe two of them, you know. Right here, this KV-8 should have 100% went for the pack that was completely out of position. If you see a pack out of position, or even an MG, they are the most important units you can get out of an Austria player playing as Soviets, or even USF, okay? Not even a wipe, not even this wipe is more worth than the pack gun. It's an, uh, it's an anti-tank unit that you're taking out of your opponent, that means your tanks can work freely. It's one more AT that you have to counter the future armor that your opponent is going to have, which is the strength of the Austria faction really at this point. Okay, and if he wants to re-counter your tanks, other than building a vehicle, 
he needs to use again 300 manpower. That's going to be completely again useless against the amount of infantry that you have. Okay. Had he went for the pack here, it would have been GG. I can guarantee you that. Okay, I'm coming forward. KV8 taking fire from the pack. Okay, he even loses the KV8 to that. See what I mean? If that pack had died, this would have never happened and the KV8 would have stayed in the field. Okay, so we have a tiger out now in the field. And you might be thinking, oh damn, now I need a tank hunter kind of vehicle like the SU-85. And that's an okay choice, but I will give you even a better choice. And one that the Soviet player should have built right here. The choice is T-34s, okay. Even though they obviously aren't a counter to the tiger, Okay, you have already double these guns, and double these guns are more than enough to deal with the tiger, especially when supported by the snares of the conscripts. And at most, you can build like maybe three these guns. You can have three these guns to deal with this tiger. Okay, it's not really the issue here. What is the strength of a tiger build for us here? It's basically again a combined arms approach where he needs to have the tiger. It, it, basically, the tiger is his counter to the to the to the vehicles you have, and the tiger is a really slow unit compared to T-34s. So, if you have T-34s and you have, for, for example, you could have two of them by the time he only has one tiger, right? And you can keep one on each side of the map, one here and one here, and the tiger has to go around the map chasing the T-34s, and he is never going to catch up to them. And while that is happening, you can have the Ziskans following the tiger and taking pot shots. And that means that if the Austrian player wants to win either this side of the map or this side of the map, he has to allocate the Tiger there just because you have a T-34, okay? The Tiger is a really big advancement and it isn't done in high level play exactly because of this. You could basically have two tanks instead of this one Tiger and you could be more mobile on the map and having more resources overall, okay? You, are, you don't really need to choose one side of the map and place the Tiger there. Right here, as the Soviet player, I would be thinking, okay, I'm going double T-34 and maybe three Z-Guns and use the three Z-Guns to kill off the Tiger and the T-34s to kill any infantry on the edges of the map or even center of the map to support the Z-Guns. And I think this is the balanced preview, but if, it, if this was the live patch, I would also maybe think about ramming the Tiger and kill it off with the T-Guns, okay? But here we have the SU being built. Again, it isn't a game-breaking choice. It's just that I think it's much better to do what I said. It's going to give you more benefits in the long term. And it's going to... If you think about it, if you were the Austria player, what would be more annoying? Fighting double these guns plus the SU, right? And the opponent has to keep them together, otherwise they might get flanked. Or you have a single Tiger and you have... 1T34 in each side of the map, killing off your infantry, and each time you go there with a tiger to try to kill it, he just backs off, and then you lose the rest of the map. What's more annoying? You have to think of, about what's more annoying for your, for your opponent to deal with as well. But okay, we have uh, SU here, tiger harassing.
And you notice already that it's uh, uh, the Soviet player is already struggling to come back into the field, and for some reason, even though he has a lot of units, it shouldn't he shouldn't be this far behind, right? With T-34s, you could be killing off these infantry squads. And Tiger comes forward, AT against fire, it isn't really a problem. Again, we have a float of manpower. And the MG goes down, yeah. And GG is called. Okay, so what did, he, did we learn from this game? First of all, I can't stress enough how important the micro mistakes are in a large scale type of scenario. You saw that those little engagements that the Soviet player kept losing along the game really hurt him in the sense that he couldn't be aggressive 50% to 60% of the game. He was always back at base, okay? So, if you aren't thinking of an attack plan, be annoying. Cap back, uh, back up points, harass points that are on the edges of the map, make the player chase you and soft retreat. When you do have a plan and you're ready to go, if he comes to harass those units that are being annoying, you then bring the hammer down on him. Okay? That's really the bread and butter of these aggressive factions such as Soviets and USF. Second thing was the float of manpower that uh, the Soviet player constantly had this game. Unused resources aren't really helpful to you. The only time where it's useful to float is if you aren't sure that he's going to do X or Y. And when I say X or Y, I mean that X or Y are choices that are really big in the game. Is he going for a big vehicle? Or is he going for some kind of elite infantry unit? Because the counters for one of those are completely different and you don't want to screw up going one or the other, okay? Um, the third thing that I would say was the big mistake here and I think that this is a global mistake between medium level players and low level players is that Prioritize being the aggressor now than in the future, okay? Had AE built the T-34 as soon as he could this game, he could have had maybe a minute of T-34 reigning time, okay? And he would have forced the hand of the Austrian player to build a pack much earlier, which is useless against the Soviet infantry. Even if you think that making him build an AT gun it, it isn't bad because he's going to have that unit for later on, it is, because it's resources that he's not using for the anti-infantry war, okay? If the opponent doesn't have to build an AT gun, he's okay with that, he's completely okay with that. AT guns, if, if they aren't needed, they are one less thing that can go badly for you. Also, the fourth thing that I felt like was a GG move as well, was when that pack was out of position and he could have captured it. It's the little things, although in that case I would argue it's more of a big thing. That make the difference. If he stole that pack gun, you wouldn't even have lost the KV-8 and you would have one extra Tegan to deal with this tiger. Just imagine that. And I think that's it for this game. I feel like it was a, it was a really useful game to show to everyone that's a medium to low level play. Uh, even though it dragged out for almost one hour. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.